Hello and welcome to the Self-Leadership Podcast. I'm Morgan and I'm here to help you embody your leader self and become unshakable through energy healing techniques and personal development coaching. Let's talk about energy today. Let's talk about aura. So what is the aura? Just briefly. It's basically the global radiation of all our subtle bodies that surround our physical body, is everything that emanates from us and everything that we radiate or emit on different planes. So the aura is an energy field that for most people cannot be seen with naked eyes because it's not dense, although some people do have the ability to see auras and you you can also learn how to see the aura. And even without seeing auras with our physical eyes, everyone can feel and perceive the aura's vibrations of other people, especially super sensitive, sensitive and super sensitive people, hypersensitive, and of course, what we call empaths. We can all, we are all energy readers, right? But it just happens at the subconscious level. And most of the people are not aware of it. And perceiving someone's vibration has nothing to do with judgment, okay? It has to do with feeling. It's a kind of intuitive reading of the energy field that is totally different from using the ego to judge. It's more like a personal indicator of compatibility, if you will. Because the our aura is the reflection of who we are, but also who we are not. <laughs> Meaning that everything that we go through is embedded in our energy field. So our true nature, our true divine nature, unconditionally loving self, and also the traumas. Like everything that we go through in life is stored in our energy field if we don't deal with it. So that's also an explanation of why we can happen to feel good or awkward or uncomfortable or even bad sometimes in someone's presence. Even if we don't know that human being in question, even if there is no logical explanation for those feelings, it's the vibration of the human being in question that gives us this good or awkward feeling. And once again, I insist, we're not talking about judgment here but more about feeling the, the, the energy, a subconscious energy reading or a perception of someone. We all have our own energy frequency. It's like an energy signature. So we could almost compare it to a fingerprint. Each of us has a unique fingerprint. Well, except for identical twins, actually. But that was just to use an analogy. And we can happen to perceive the energy of someone we know, uh, whether he or she is dead or alive. And we can tell it's this human in question or this energy in question, because even if the, the, the being is not standing right next to us physically at this moment in time, it's because we know and recognize the energy signature. And our aura can happen to be damaged or have disruptions, can be affected by life circumstances, our lifestyle, our diet. Uh, Diet refers to food, obviously, but also everything we put into our body. Mm -hmm. And it can also be damaged if we are exposed to a strong magnetic field, for example. And sometimes when a physical accident happens, or even during some procedures, the aura can happen to be torn or pierced. And this can provoke imbalances or diseases that can't necessarily be explained or detected by doctors, like physicians, by the medical field. And sometimes fixing the aura can help remove some pains as well. There is also a phenomenon that we can call energy parasites or entities and they can attach to us and be attached to our aura, actually. 
So these can be disembodied beings, but also people that are alive. Like when you when you have an energy vampire, like if someone is draining your energy, it's like there is this emotional cord. And this can be like, you, you can visualize the, the cord like a straw attached to you. And the, the human vampire, the energy vampire in question, sucking your energy through the straw, just to use a, an image. So entities are spirits and not all of them are dark or malevolent, but they all need energy to survive on the plane where they are. So in order to feed themselves, they are going to attach themselves to a human's aura and create etheric cords from which they can suck the energy out of the being to whom they are attached. And they're going to feed themselves from their host. So this is also a form of energy vampirism. And even if there is an entity that is not malevolent, like it's a soul that is stuck and it doesn't want to harm you, it's still harmful because it's still sucking your energy. Even if its primary intention is definitely not to harm you, it can still cause imbalances like emotional, mental, and of course energy balances. As far as the implants are concerned, it can sound a little bit weird for those of you who are listening and are not familiar with all that, but those are etheric devices that can cause all kinds of troubles. And the more damaged the aura is, the more the human being in question will radiate low vibrations. And according to the law of resonance, the more this human being in question is going to attract, or let's say there is going to to be a resonance phenomenon attracting situations, people, or entities of the same vibration. So implants are more and more common, I would say. I first became aware of these, I don't know if it was in 2014 or 2015, but I read an article about that and I intuitively knew, immediately knew how to remove them. It's like it unlocked uh, a gift, like a soul gift or soul ability in me to actually spot them and remove them. So, for example, uh, an implant can be, once again, it's etheric. Well, there are some physical ones, but we're going to talk about etheric ones here. You can have, for example, etheric implants in your throat and they are meant to copy your inner voice and hack your inner voice and you're going to have thoughts in your head, obviously, that are going to sound like your own voice but you're not necessarily going to recognize yourself as the author of these thoughts. And most of the time these thoughts are on the loop. Uh, when you have thoughts on the loop, when you have um, something that happens and you cannot go past it, of course it can be due to a trauma, but sometimes it's also due to implants. I'm not going to go into more details about that, but I've been removing them since 2015. I, I will say 2015, just to be sure. So, and removing them is really, really life-changing because you can really take control of your mind, take control of your inner speech. And of course, there are so many more cases of implants. And like, for example, sometimes you can feel like you have a pressure in your head and it can be due to an implant. Like sometimes you have like um, octopus-like parasites wrapped around your head. Like there are tentacles going inside your head, basically, and that's why sometimes you have a headache and you cannot get rid of it because it's not your physical body per se that is having an imbalance, but it's more like energetic. So cleansing and purifying and strengthening your aura is therefore very, very important because your energy field is actually like, acts like a shield and the more you cleanse it, the more you, you pay attention to yourself, uh, you take care of yourself, you're mindful of what you're putting in your body and what you are surrounding yourself with and who you are surrounding yourself with as well, the stronger your energy field is going to be. 
And this is also for empaths, like people who are really, really sensitive. Uh, I recommend doing emotional healing. But th that's a whole other topic. But as an empath myself, I used to feel like everything like times 10. Like I was that sensitive. And because I I worked on myself, and I still do work on myself, don't get me wrong. Like there, It's not like um, a destination that you reach once for good, you know. Let's say you take a shower minimum once per day. That's the maintenance of your physical body, right? So you need to do the same with your aura, with your energy body. And growth, taking care of yourself, is part of your routine, your hygiene routine, spiritual hygiene, energetic routine. The more you work on yourself, the more your subtle bodies are cleansed, the more your aura is strengthened and therefore the more you radiate strong vibrations. I'm talking about positively strong vibrations and remember, we always hear about the law of attraction in society, but what about the law of resonance? There are way more universal laws and that's something to consider when you are working on changing your life. I actually wrote a book about that a few years ago, actually. Knowing the universal laws to manifest your reality. If you'd be interested in reading it, just drop me a message and uh, I will be happy to guide you where to find it. I can actually put the link in the description of this podcast. Yeah, just a small parenthesis. The more you have positively high vibrations within you, the more you will create a resonance phenomenon with external events. So the more positively you vibrate, the more positive things you will see in your life, to put it simply. So a few symptoms that are telling you that your aura needs to be cleansed is that, for example, you're feeling heavy for no reason. For no rational reason. When I say no reason, there is always a reason, but you know what I mean, like nothing obvious. And sometimes you will be like, oh, it's weird because every time I go to this specific place or every time I interact with this human being, I feel drained, I feel bad. Trust yourself, you know. Um, so you can feel, sometimes you feel nauseous, Sometimes you have unexplained pain, and here I'm not talking about anything medical, okay? I have no medical background, no medical authority, so I'm, I'm talking purely from an energy perspective, okay? So if, for example, uh, you are followed by a doctor or by physicians of some sort, and they cannot find any cause to your pains, like your tests are coming back perfect, but you, you still have this pain, uh, you could maybe consider checking the energy aspect. Just, just a little idea here. But once again, um, I repeat, I am not a medical authority. So, very important to say that. And... Um, so you can happen to have dark thoughts or thoughts on the loop, feeling very uh, annoyed, irritated for, once again, for no rational reason, it just comes out of the blue, or you just burst out of anger, or you just start crying for, once again, something quote-unquote small, you know, you're like, oh, why am I crying for that? Um, trust yourself. Really trust yourself and use your body as a communication tool because that's what it is, very powerful. So, yeah, and weird sensations, and unexplained sensations, if you feel like heaviness on your shoulders as well, if you have brain fog, brain fog can also be a sign that you, your energy field is congested, I want to say, congested or uh, heavy. And uh, headaches for no, once again, no rational reason, and they are not going away with a painkiller. So this kind of uh, these are these are a few signs that can indicate that you could benefit from cleansing your aura. So how to cleanse your aura? You will say. Mm, do I already have a guided meditation? I will actually. In the next episode, I will record a very short and sweet aura cleansing meditation 
that is very accessible to everyone and that you can really do very quickly even if you are like you are between two meetings and you need to cleanse your aura you need to refresh yourself I will record that so that you can learn to do it for yourself and of course if you need help if you have a more complex situation please feel free to reach out I've been doing energy cleanses on the daily for years, whether it is on myself or on my clients. And that's one of the services, if not the service, which I'm the most known for. So don't hesitate and I will be happy to help you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you very much for listening. I'm sending you much love and I will see you in the next episode. Bye!